and they were hostile. Mm -hmm. You know how those wagon trains survived? <coughs> when they were attacked, they circled the yes, wagon. Sir. And everybody stayed in the circle. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they did that? Mm -hmm. One, because a multi-strain cord is stronger than a single strand. <laughs> All right. But also because they had no one else to depend on but each other. Right. Peter says in, in his first letter, he says, I beseech you, brethren, as pilgrims and strangers. Yes, sir. That you abstain from fleshly lust that war against yes, the soul. I want to I want to take note of the fact that we are pilgrims and strangers here on earth. Something that we often refer to in my major well is that in order to be where God wants us to be. We have to get our minds out of this world. <laughs> we have to get our minds out of this world. That's right. See, as long as we're thinking about things that are physical and things that we can touch and things that we can see, our minds are where they should be. Yet we're still carnal minded. So All right. In First Corinthians three and three, Paul says, "Are you not carnal minded? Since I hear there's still strife and divisions among you. See, being carnal minded only paying attention to that which we can see." Would set us up for division as well. Yes, sir. We have to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Yes, sir. And it's so important that we do that because Christ died in order to make us one. Mm -hmm. Christ died in order to make us one. How can we ever imagine that we have the right to break that unity? Mm. Again, I'm so thankful that I've had the opportunity to speak to you today. From the Word of God, these are my words. All right. I pray that everything I say it has its source and its root in the Word of God. Because it is our guide. Yes, sir. It's our light. To light our pathway as we walk through this, as we journey through this land. And again, I, I thank you for having me. Brothers and sisters of Southside Brethren here. And I thank all of you for coming. And I thank God for the unity that we display in these Fifth Sunday fellowships. There is one issue that I believe is positive that some of you may call negative that I really probably should not address. Because we have the issue, not only here, but many places that some have talked about that the most segregated time in America Mercy. is on Sunday morning. All right. And as we look through our congregations, we know that many will say, well, that's a cultural thing, and, and it's this, that. That's a personal thing. Yeah. That's a personal thing. That's a personal choice by either one or many individuals or one group or another group of individuals. I don't know that it will ever change. Hmm. But Christ died that we can all be one. Amen. He didn't die so that all black folks can be one. He didn't die so that all whites can be one. He didn't die so that all Hispanics can be one. He died so that all mankind yeah, can be one. Amen. For as many have been baptized in the Christ have put him on. <laughs> By one spirit, we all baptized into one body. But we're in the church of Christ. We are monks. Doesn't matter what the color is. But what we have to do in the body is be willing to sacrifice our own pleasure, comfort, in order for the good of our brother and sister, and in order, therefore, for the good of the whole. And I leave you with that, and I hope that's something that will make a difference in the way you approach things in the future. Not that you're approaching things in a wrong manner, but certainly we have a display of unity here. Yes. I, one last thing. Uh, you've heard the saying that charity begins at home. <laughs> unity begins at home as well. All right. At home, whether you're talking about in your family, at home, or whether you're talking about at your home congregation, that's where unity begins. Because I tell you, if you can't sit down with your brothers and sisters at your own congregation and work together, 
deny yourself a little bit for the betterment of the good, suffer and sacrifice a little bit, you're not going to be able to do it anywhere else. Those are the people that we're in closest contact with. Those are the people that, shall I say, we live and work with on a daily or weekly basis. And if we can live and work with them in unity, we're not going to have any problems this way. These are things that don't necessarily come naturally. But these are things that we have to learn how to do, that we have to acquire. And we're going to truly be sons and daughters of God, because God is one. And there's one mediator between God and man, and that is the man, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I could talk about that a long time, but I'm going to have to see that. Uh, Jesus Christ, that's my champion. And that's, that's, that's our champion. He is the only man that could have fixed things between you and I and God. Nobody else. Yes, sir. If it weren't for him, we'd still be enemies of God. Mm. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, the man, is the only mediator between God and man. And if you're not in Christ, then you have that opportunity today. The gospel of Christ is that he died for our sins. He was buried, rose the third day. He ascended into heaven, sent to the right hand of God, where he is an advocate for you and me. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 and 4 gives us the precise facts of the gospel. Believing in what Christ did and his work, you must repent of your sins. That repenting is to turn from your sin and turn, turn from your way and turn to God's way. Yes. That's hard sometimes. Turn from your way and turn to God's way. All right. We get hooked up into doing things our way. We don't want to change. <laughs> nobody said it was going to be easy. All right. But it's not easy. Hmm. It's just sure. If we change from our way to God's way, we are on a sure way. Yeah. Yeah. Then you must be baptized for the remission of your sins. And Acts 2 47 says, The Lord adds to the church yes, today, sir. those that are being saved. So if there's one here today who desires to be baptized in the Christ, who, who wants to become a child of God, or if there's one here today who needs to make confession, we're going to have a song of invitation, and we ask you to come as we do so. Let us stand. You, not to temptation.